Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and the independent senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders. Uh, thanks to both of you for coming in. So what, what would you do about this issue of income inequality? It's a poignant story we just told, uh, we just heard, uh, and uh, the president's going to be focusing in on this in his State of the Union address. Well, I thought the se segment that just ran was excellent. I agreed with Ann. I agreed with what she was saying because what, she, what she's said, saying is that I've been on dependency entitlement programs for years. They haven't changed my life. What I want is a job. And that's what we need. It isn't income inequality. It's income opportunity. We need growth. We need prosperity because a job is what she wants. That's that's the dignity that she needs and the opportunity for a way out. She wants some education, she too, does. to help her get a job. You don't have a problem with that. Do I have a problem with that? No. no. I think it's absurd that we have a probably most dysfunctional early childhood education system in the entire world, uh, that the cost of college is soaring. Uh, and I believe uh, that we should learn from many other countries that understand that education is an investment and that every kid in this country, regardless of income, should have an educational opportunity. What do you want to hear the president say tomorrow night? Well, what I want to hear him say is quite similar to what the Pope has said. Is that is that at a time when we have the top 1% in this country owning 38% of the financial wealth and the bottom 60% owning 2.3% of the wealth, that that is obscene, that is unacceptable, and that is not what America is about. In terms of income, in the last few years, 95% of all new income generated wealth went to the top 1%. So we need an economy that works for all of the people and not just millionaires and billionaires. Congresswoman? Well, we need to grow the middle class, and what the middle class needs are jobs. And that's really the problem that the president has to explain. It's tough to blame President Bush for the current economic woes. We have five years of Obama policies, and what do we have? We have people who are really suffering because people made more money. If you look at the median income level, people actually made more money seven years ago than they're making now. People have every right to be upset. So what we need to do is reject these policies of growing entitlements and dependency and instead embrace policies that will grow jobs for people because that's the question because you want Mr. less you want President less Obama, government but where's the jobs you want less government but uh, uh, senator you want more but government? the congresswoman kind of forgets to mention is that when obama became president we were losing over seven hundred thousand jobs a month because of the greed and the recklessness and illegal behavior on wall street is the economy good today? No, it is not. Is it a heck of a lot better than when Obama first came in? Sure it is. The real issue that we need right now is, in fact, how do you create jobs? How do you protect working families? Cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, abolishing the minimum wage, which some of my more conservative friends want to do, is not going to help Ann, and it's not going to help millions of workers. We need a real jobs program. We need to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, put millions of people back to work. Make states like Minnesota and Vermont more energy efficient so people are not Where wasting. Where are you going to get the money? You're going to get the money by asking the wealthiest people in this country. More taxes? Pardon me? More taxes on the wealthy? Yes, wealthiest. my goodness. Given the fact that one out of four corporations in America doesn't pay a nickel in federal taxes, given the fact that the wealthy are doing phenomenally well, their tax rates are much lower than they were in the days of that old socialist Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yeah, I do think the wealthy and well, large corporations. Let's talk a little bit about tax rates. I'm a former federal tax litigation attorney. If there's anything that's been proven over time, Wolf, it's this. When you lower the tax burden, that's a cost of doing business, you'll create more jobs. That's exactly what the piece that preceded our segment said. This woman, Ann, wants a job. And so we have people all across the United States who have an ability to start companies. Single mothers like Ann want to start a business. We're not talking about no. mega businesses. We're talking about people who just want to get so in. So basically, on the what she's saying, market. Senator, if you raise taxes on those big corporations, right. there won't be enough jobs. They're, they're going to cut right. back on hiring yeah, but people. It, it's not Michelle, only that. Not, but no, let me say something. It's not only that. It's also the fact that oh. government is spending too much. The share that government has been spending. The question is. Will people like Anne have money in her pocket to spend, or will it be government's big pocket that will be gulping our Go money? Ahead, That's a big problem. Look, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that those countries around the world which have virtually eliminated childhood poverty are those countries that have invested heavily in education. Uh, those now, where is that? Excuse me. Wh no. which, which country has Norway, eliminated childhood poverty? Norway has. Denmark virtually eliminated. We are at 22%. They're less than 5%.
Those countries guarantee health care to all people as a right of citizens. Well, and you know what? Let me finish, please. And you know what? They spend about 50% per capita on health care that we do. So those countries that have strong... That's not socialism. But a Those socialized are the nation like Norway, let me add, yeah. the reason why Norway has so much wealth is because they tap into their natural resource called energy. We could be energy independent in this country, create millions of high-paying jobs if we'd only open up and legalize American energy well, 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 production. We're often, we're often running we here, but oil, one, one second, one second. Gas, but it doesn't matter if you had all the oil totally, in the tank. Okay. It totally matters. We've got, a, we've got huge natural resources. In fact, we're the number one country in the world in energy resources, and we say no to it. Yeah, but if the, the fact of the matter is we've up, had an energy... People like Dan could have good high-paying jobs. Go ahead, Senator. <laughs> the fact of the matter is we've had an energy boom in recent years. But 95% of all new so income, excuse me, 95% of all new income went to the top 1%. Now, what I think Ann That's was talking Obama. about, excuse me, I think what Ann was talking about is the desire for education. My impression is she doesn't have a whole lot she of money. She wants a job. Ann well, wants wa a job. I heard her say she wants she, a job and she wants to be able to support her family. I think she said she also needs education in order to get the job. And if you don't have any money, it's hard to get education. But in so America, what we're seeing. In America, in America, we've we have got the highest education. We've got a great we have, educational system. Wait a minute. In America, excuse me. In America, in America, you have a, job. a college education system where costs are soaring, where kids are leaving school, twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars in debt, and hundreds of thousands That's of young exactly people right. have given up and on what's college. What's been American what, what, policy when it comes to higher education? It's been let's put more federal government money. No, actually, if it's not been the case. If you look at the correlation, the federal government has actually no. increased the cost of education. So now there's a trillion dollars in debt outstanding from American uh, kids. I, that I, doesn't I help think anyone. You've, you've got it a little bit backwards, and I think the idea. That solving the very serious problem of the declining middle class and the growing gap between the wealthy and everybody else is to do what some of Ms. Bachman's colleagues, perhaps yourself, you want to cut Social Security, you want to transform. That's absolutely medical. a lie. This is what? the old oh, you, canard. You, you, you do not want to cut it out all the time. What? Wait a second. Wanted. Wait a second. It's, well, it's you, a lie. Are, I mean, let's face it, you, Senator Sanders. You, you, you believe in the chain CPI? You shouldn't you be believe? lying about what our position yeah, is. Not lying. Ask me. Ask me. Do, do you I believe in the chain CPI? No, I'm okay. not cutting Social Security. Did you Security. vote to transform? That is not what I'm doing. Do you support but a change CPI? I will tell you. Do you support a change CPI? What is going to do you turn support the economy a change? around? You're not answering the question. It, do you support a change CPI? It is a joke for You're the answering. Democrat Party to right. lie Virtually about what our hold position on, hold on. is. I asked you because, a question. You didn't because, give me an answer. Well, calm do down. You, do the you support the, a change the, CPI? Calm down. The reality is we want Ann's life to be better because President Obama has created an economic war on women so that women are saying, I, I can't even buy propane to heat my house. And now my health insurance premiums have quadrupled because of Obamacare. That's an economic well, war on women. We well, want women's every... lives to be better. But uh, well, on, the, on, the social secu on the social security yeah. issue, even the president of the United States has right. indicated, correct me if I'm wrong, right. he's willing to take a position you strongly disagree I with. I sure do. And I believe that virtually every Republican in the United States Congress believes in cutting Social Security. That's I absolutely believe that they, the, the it's Ryan a lie budget, it's not true. The Ryan budget called for the transformation of Medicare into a voucher program, massive cuts in Medicaid, and many Republicans... All I, that is can I finish your point? Well, I'm just can I finish you, your point? But when you say something quick, that isn't true, can I, I finish your point, please? It's not true. Do you what believe you in raising the minimum wage? What I'm saying is I believe, believe in economic in opportunity. Let me tell you what happened in Australia. Do you believe? The minimum wage in Australia is $20 an hour. They're losing the Ford plant. Right. They're losing I the GM plant. I presume that means you they're, they're losing she doesn't Medicaid. want to raise I gather she doesn't Let's want to face talk face about that. No, one. I want Most job growth. Republicans. I want opportunity. Okay. And I want people's wages to go up. Yeah, I know. We all do. And it do, won't under President Obama's Most policies. Republicans, by the way. Because you under President can, Obama's policy, people's wages have gone down 8% in seven years. Not just just stayed the same, Most, they've uh, gone yeah. down 8% for medium. Go ahead, respond. Most Republicans, and Ms. Bachman could tell us her view, believe in abolishing the concept of the minimum wage so that employers in America can pay workers 3 or $4 an hour. You know, I'm not all, sure... All of this is I, I don't know if it's most. I know there are plenty well, of in the Senate. In the Honestly, Senate, God, by the way, all we've heard are these broad brush generalized statements. Right, I will tell you that most Republicans is how one job is going to be created for Ann. Ann wants a job. She, those poor kids sitting in the kitchen. 
That woman well, needs to be able to be able to buy a home, own a car, move up. Help we her had kids. the trickle that's down economic. Happen. Not you, this you, economic war on women that you, the president has been putting forward for had, the last five you know, years. Many it's of this, embarrassing. Right, it's a shame. Go ahead, Senator. You know, many of his buck. Buckman's ideas have already taken place. That was George Bush's tenure, which was the worst economic performance in the private sector well, we in the modern history. We lowered taxes. We under, we under, excuse under me. Excuse One me. Time. We lowered taxes for the rich. And you know what? On the Bush, we lost a whole lot of jobs. Now, the truth of the what matter is, do excuse me, excuse me, to be able to one out of four corporations in America policy. today pays nothing in taxes. We're losing about $100 That's billion. Hold on, 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 I just want to clarify. Do you believe that the minimum wage should be increased? What I think is that we need to create jobs, and I think we need to look at the example of Australia. You want to talk about raising the minimum wage? Well, that's going to so be a, if, that's going to be a major you, issue you, in, the, you, in the president's speech tomorrow night. He's going to call on Congress to you raise the minimum wage. Question, so, do, so do you think that it should be I'm raised at twenty dollars an hour? I'm just asking if you want ten dollars in ten cents an hour. I'm just asking if you believe that there should be an increase in, in the minimum wage. No. I don't. Okay. All right. And the, yeah, and the, okay. and, but what I do believe, right. but do you believe that taxes should be cut for the average job creator and the average American? No. I think they Go ahead should. And answer the question. I, I also we think need the, a good the tax federal government should restrain its spending. Excuse That's me. where you need austerity. You know, we have once again one out of four corporations not paying a nickel in federal taxes. So they should they be paying. Keep, they should be creating jobs, but what they are doing is they're set, putting their money in the Cayman Islands. And they are shutting down factories in the United States and investing in China, uh, in Mexico, in Vietnam. So, so I think what we need, I think brain? what we need is a demand. Should they corporate, be... Excuse me, may I have just one second? No. Should one second, just one tiny second. Yeah, go ahead. I think what we need to do is tell corporate America, the time is now to invest, not in China, not in Mexico, but in the United States, of America. I That's why I you believe, redesign me, our tax policy we need to and our tax reform our so that jobs can be started you know, this is, We have this the is highest a, corporate our, tax guys, rate in the world. No, we do not. End not in story. terms of an effective... Highest corporate tax rate in the world. You want to know effective. why people are leaving the United States investing elsewhere? Because President Obama has the highest corporate well, tax rate be, in, in fact, the world. And that's in terms hurting of an effective Anne. tax rate, that's hurting Anne, that is and that's not causing true. her to this not be able to get a job. This was an excellent discussion. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to continue the conversation Absolutely. in the days and weeks to yes. come because you, bring, you both bring good arguments to the table. Uh, Senator, thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure. Congresswoman, Thank thanks to you, you as well. At least we know you don't want to raise the minimum wage. Cost of living increases on Social Security. And Bernie doesn't want to cut the taxes on corporations so that we can have new jobs created. So he wants to increase the taxes on those big corporations taxes. so that they right. can pay for education and other infrastructure well, development. We're other. Have fewer jobs. So there's a good That's debate, and, and you both reflect the, those good positions, and we'll continue the conversation. Thanks.